Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 24. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fellow entrepreneurs, my driving passion at Entrepreneur on Fire is to share the incredible journey of inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. We are here to support your journey, so go to eofire.com and join the Fire Nation email community. I have some great gifts that you will find incredibly helpful, and we are always creating more for our valued Fire Nation subscribers. And now, give it up for our five-star reviews. And Reinhardt, Fathers Over 40, Lords Wellhaven, Green Bean Town, and Gary Fortunato. Thank you so much for supporting the show, and I look forward to thanking everyone who does the same. Okay, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Sybil Chavis. Sybil, are you prepared to ignite? I'm prepared, John. I'm prepared. (laughs) (laughs) Sybil is the creator and writer of Possibility of Today. She is a former attorney and HR executive turned writer, possibility seeker, and lifelong learner. Sybil created Possibility of Today because she wanted to help others who desire to break free of their negative committee, take actions on things they've always wanted to do, find more clarity, and ultimately live life in a different way. So Sybil, I've given a little overview, but why don't you take us through a little more about who you are and what you do? Yeah, I mean, I think you you hit on all the high points, but uh, yeah, I used to, um, not so long ago, I was an attorney. Uh, and worked in corporate America for a little over a decade Um, and, you know, had a really good experience in corporate America. I wasn't one of those people that hated my job and just didn't know what, you know, I was going to, how I was going to get through the next day. But I did realize that um, there came a time when I had kind of learned, I think, all the lessons that I needed to learn and it was time to move on. Um, And that you know, kind of allowed me to lean in the direction of moving on to something I was, I felt like a little more passionate about. Um, and that's kind of how I found my way to possibility of, of today. So I, um, you know, had been blogging probably for a couple of years, you know, at night and early in the, the morning hours before going to work while I was still working um, as in-house counsel at the advertising agency I was at. Um, but when I decided to go and, and launch full time into, to doing this, um, you know, obviously I had to kind of really make it as professional as possible and get really serious about it. Uh, and I, um, I worked with, uh, Corbett Barr from Think Traffic and basically broke down the blog that was a hobby and turned it into, Um, what I like to call a community now, um, which is the possibility of today and kind of has just been going forward from, you know, there on out, taking things one day at a time and just trying to do, um, you know, everything that I can that would really be helpful for the, the community at possibility of today. That's great. Now we actually had Corbett Barr on the show recently. He was a a great great interviewee, gave us a lot of actionable advice. And yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, he is a great guy. We went a little bit through his course, how to start a blog that matters. Was that specifically what you, what you went through? Oh, you know, I kind of caught Corbett prior to him developing that course, I believe. Um, I went through, um, something called traffic school. Right. Um, And Corbett and I, I actually had the opportunity to work with Corbett one on one. um, And I did complete the course, but I didn't do I I never did the course how to how to start a blog that matters. But I hear it's really good. Yeah, it's great. (laughs) We actually had his partner, Caleb Wojcik, on the show as well, who was phenomenal. And they're both very instrumental in that. And it was a great program. I personally went through it, really enjoyed it. So anybody listening out there, go check it out at thinktraffic.net. So we're going to transition to our, our, really our first topic today, and that's the success quote. 
here at Entrepreneur on Fire, we really like to start every show off with a success quote because it's kind of our way to get the motivational ball rolling and get people really pumped and excited for what's about to come. And I've checked Sybil's uh, background out and we have a lot of fun stuff coming. Why don't you start us off with your favorite success quote? Yeah, so uh, interestingly enough, I just posted, to, posted it today on my uh, Facebook page. Um, and it's, unfortunately, I can't attribute it to anyone because it's one of those unknown ones. But sometimes those are like the beauties, the pearls of wisdom. Uh, and it's never let your successes go to your head or your failures go to your heart. And that is attributed to unknown. Unknown. It's not mine. I don't know whose it is, but I do love it. <laughs> Great. So it is a very powerful quote. So how would you say you actually apply this quote to your everyday life? <laughs> oh, goodness, all the time. Um, you know, and I think it's something that I, I started really understanding the importance of when I, when I launched the community possibility of today. But, um, you know, I honestly, I had so many blind spots. You know, I was an attorney. Um, I'd worked in corporate America. I had never been self-employed. I had never started a community. I had never written a book. I had never, honestly, I had never really written like an article. Um, you know, I had done legal memos and briefs, but it was completely different what I was trying to do. And so, um, obviously there was a lot of failure <laughs> in the beginning. And I mean, so much so that I, I really don't even look at it as failure anymore. I, um, you know, I've come to realize that there's this thing that I call the success spiral. And everyone thinks that the trajectory of success is kind of just like a, um, either a vertical or like a, let's say a diagonal line straight up. But the reality is, is that they're going to be twists and curves and ups and downs. And it's, it's more in line with a spiral, which is why I call it the success spiral. Um, and the idea <laughs> or the object of the game is, you know, okay, if I'm here at point A and I want to get to point B, you know, I understand that I have to travel up the success spiral. And that means that I am going to encounter failures, which are really challenges, which I now have translated to be lessons <laughs> that help you push up the success spiral. So this was really something I think that I had to, to really understand because it can be really disheartening uh, to have too many challenges and to have too many quote unquote failures. Um, and a lot of times you can allow those failures to do just what this quote says and go to your heart and then you end up panicking or you end up quitting or you end up thinking, oh, this is the sign. I'm not really supposed to be doing this. But, you know, in essence, if there's something that you really feel that you believe in, and it's something that, you know, just kind of resonates with every part of who you are and you just feel like you were meant to do it, then I've realized that you've got to go up the success spiral. And that means, you know, letting yourself work through the failure. And also <laughs> a good footnote is to not let the success go to your head, right? Because you never want to think that you have all the answers or that, you know, you're just smarter than <laughs> your own good. Um, because it's all kind of just like a balancing act, you know, and, and that's why I like the quote. You don't, you don't want to kind of let your ego get built up too much <laughs> by letting those successes go to your head. But you also don't want to ever let the lessons and challenges pull you down. No, but it's a great message of a quote. And the visualization of the success spiral. I really love that visual that you gave us. So thank you for doing that. That is sure. very powerful. And I've written that down for, for future topics. <laughs> so great, Good deal. great stuff. Good deal. Let, let's transition to our next topic. And, and that is failure. I, I do always encounter entrepreneurs who speak about their failures very openly. Some label it differently as mistakes or as you are a success spiral, which is great. I love seeing all the different angles of viewing failure, but the reality of the situation is if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to encounter failure of some sort throughout, the, throughout your journey and mm -hmm. often multiple times. And what defines you as an entrepreneur is how you react to that failure. And we'd like to now analyze a failure or a different success spiral that you've encountered throughout your journey. Really bring us through the events that led up to this failure. 
goodness, I mean, <laughs> which one do I choose? Um, no, I mean, <laughs> there have been there have been a lot, you know. And in the beginning, I, you know, I despised every single one of them. Um, but I have learned to kind of look at them from a different perspective. And I think, let me see, which one stands out the most? Um, you know, honestly, I, let's start. I, I'll start with my blog. You know, kind of pre-Corbett, uh, before I found my way to Corbett and Think Traffic, I had this blog um, called the uh, thealternative.com. And it was all about looking at life from a different perspective. And, you know, I um, I learned so much. So it's kind of hard to, to call it a failure. But if you're just looking at it on paper, it was. Um, <laughs> I, you know, my traffic was really, really low. And I was um, just not connecting with my audience at all or with my community. I really hadn't found my voice, um, which I think I continue to find (laughs) even to this day. Um, And, you know, I had put in a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of effort, and I, I had even invested money. You know, I hadn't done what a lot of people who I'd seen succeeding really well do in terms of just going and picking a WordPress theme for free. And the next thing you know, they had 50,000 comments and 200,000 visitors every month. (laughs) That was just not my experience. Um, And I felt like I had invested so much time and so much energy um, and even money into, um, into this blog. And it just boggled my mind. I didn't understand why it was just not taking off. It had no traction. Um, And honestly, you know, I mean, I was, I mean, we're not talking a short period of time. I mean, granted, I wasn't doing this full time, but I was doing it, you know, after work um, and definitely putting in it, you know, putting in some significant hours into it. Um, And I had done it for, I want to say, at least a good year. Um, And, you know, I kind of was in my own vacuum um, and it was just not working. So, Sybil, what were some key actions that you took to pull yourself out of this funk that you kind of found yourself in? Yeah. And, you know, it was interesting because I think I had such, um, you know, I had, I understood that I was doing something that I had no clue what I was doing. Obviously, you know, anytime you're going to invest time, effort, money into something, you want to see it succeed. Um, but I knew that there were things to learn. So I can't say that I was necessarily, you know, kind of feeling like, oh, this is awful as much as I was like, okay, what am I missing? Um, and that was kind of how I decided to look at the situation. And it was easier to kind of work myself out of that quote unquote funk or whatever it was that you described, um, the word you used, but it was easier to work myself out of that because I felt like I was searching for the solution. Um, so it was never like, oh, here we go again or, oh, this didn't work, or that didn't work, or I was just like, oh, that wasn't the solution, let me look somewhere else. Oh, that wasn't the solution, I'll look somewhere else. There's like this great quote by Thomas Edison, I got it probably was like my, on the top of my mind every day. Um, I, I haven't found, I haven't failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. <laughs> Yes. And that was the uh, essence of, of my experience with my first blog. <laughs> As part of this journey where you did go through this period where you weren't getting the kind of traffic and feedback that you wanted, but you kept trying, you reached out to people like Corbett Bar, Think Traffic, and others, and kept trying new systems and strategies. At some point, you obviously hit upon something that worked because of your success today. So you had... A, a light bulb moment of some kind, what I like to term as an aha moment. And mm-hmm. as entrepreneurs, we all have little aha moments along the way, and those always help keep us going and propel us to the next level. Can you actually identify a aha moment that you had that was very powerful to you? Sure. I mean, you know, I think one of the first ones came when I was able to really work closely with Corbett. And, um, you know, because sometimes... It takes, um, you know, a conversation with somebody who's just going to be very honest and candid. Um, and you can figure out, okay, wait, I thought that that was working. And they're like, no, that's just totally not the way I was uh, <laughs> seeing that. And so, you know, he told me the name of my blog, alternative.com. He's like, I just don't get it. <laughs> 
And I was like, but it's, you know, it's all cool, Corbin. It's like, you know, you're looking at life from a different perspective, like alternative, alternative view. He's like, I I don't get it. And (laughs) that was an aha moment because I realized that something could make perfect sense to me in my head. But unless I had really started thinking about, okay, how is this going to be received? How is this going to be understood? Is this, con- you know, is this connecting with people in the way that I want? Is this fulfilling the intention that I have behind the content that I'm pulling out? Then, I, then it would be a miss. And so the aha moment was I turned my kind of perspective from this is what I feel is the solution to, you know, this is what my community wants wants. This is what makes sense to people. This is what's going to connect to people. And clearly to make certain that it's still consistent, um, you know, with my, my intention and and my priority and what I'm trying to do with my brand, but to be very cognizant of the fact that you want to connect with people and you want to be understood, right? You don't want to be the apartment building that has a, you know, a 95% vacancy rate because you're located off of the main street around a corner behind a bridge and a huge apartment building where no one can see you. (laughs) So what were some specific connections you were making with your audience that was allowing you to take these strides forward? You know, I think it was just, um, I found the framework that really allowed me to, to say what I was trying to say. And that wasn't easy, right? Because it took a lot of thought in terms of, I, you know, I had the alternative view, and I had to brainstorm for some time, um, and I brainstormed with Corbett to arrive at the possibility of today. But once I found that, that was like one of the first keys to everything because it unlocked my voice. It you know opened up my brand. It it unlocked you know my connection. It allowed me to connect with people because they understood what I was finally trying to communicate. Um, and just kind of really taking the time and the energy to get the framework and the foundation right just allow me to kind of build on that from, you know, that day forward. While perusing your website, one thing I came across that I really enjoyed was a post you had made about going 40 days without complaining one time. Mm-hmm. Can you delve into that for our listeners and explain that process and what you got out of that? Yeah, yeah. And, and I actually did that while I was in corporate America. So <laughs> that's even more of a feat. You know, it's easier when you're, when you're working on your own and, you know, you're just choosing who you want to come into contact with throughout the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I was definitely um, one of those people that kind of got sucked into the uh, ups and downs of the day. <laughs> um, and it's very reactive to all the things that were happening around me, the people, what people were saying. I was taking, you know, like they say, don't take things personally, that people say I was taking things personally. Like I was doing everything <laughs> the reverse way of, of the way it should be done. Um, and there just came a time, I think, when I realized the heaviness. <laughs> that was associated in the impact of all of that. And, you know, at first you're like, oh yeah, whatever, I'll stop complaining. And then, you know, I'm going to start feeling good, blah, blah, blah. But I hadn't realized that there were going to be so many impacts, um, you know, just on my work, my productivity, my, um, you know, even the, the ideas and my creativity, like everything just kind of opened when I removed a lot of that negativity from my mind. And I would complain about anything, you know, at the time I lived in Michigan. So it was the weather, the lack of sun, the coldness, the rain. Um, That was just, of course, on the way to work. And then I would, you know, get in the elevator and talk about, oh my God, did you see how cold it was? I'd go up the floor. Then of course, all of the stuff that would happen, you know, I'd get inundated at work. Oh, I can't believe I have all this work to do. Oh, I have 500 emails. Oh, you know, I mean, literally just from one thing, I can't believe she said that. I can't believe he did that in that meeting. Oh my God. You know, I would literally go from one thing to the next. And I, you know, when I first started the, the challenge, I took the first day and just kind of became aware of the thoughts that were running through my mind. And it was remarkable <laughs> in, a, in a bad way. Um, 
And once I kind of really, I mean, and it took some conditioning, right? You know, I was still, it's not like I went from, you know, complaining all the time to complaining, you know, zero in two days. Um, But really trying to make a concerted effort to be thoughtful um, about the thoughts that were running through my mind, it freed up my bandwidth, if you will, you know, and I was able to start focusing on the things that I wanted, the things that I was working on, you know, like new possibilities started popping into my mind um, because I just wasn't kind of weighed down from all of the junk I was normally focused on. I think anybody that's worked in corporate America can relate to what you're speaking of. I, I definitely have. I can definitely relate to the water cooler talk. Oh, yeah, right? All of the above, absolutely. And so I definitely commend you for doing that and for sharing that with the listeners because it's a challenge that we all can take. And I think you're right. It really makes you identify the thoughts that are running through your head when you're not verbalizing them because you're taking a a stand in your mind not to verbalize them. So you're actually identifying them even more so. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was life-changing. Absolutely life-changing. You know, I think it changed... You know, it's silly because everyone's like, really, just like stopping complaining changed the trajectory of your life. I'm like, yeah, it really did. Because, you know, everything is a possibility. And it's it's a matter of, you know, what are you going to choose to go after? How are you going to choose to move through your day? You know, how are you going to choose to feel? And if you start choosing different, more positive possibilities, you just start living differently. Sybil, have you had an I've made it moment? I don't know that I'm ever going to have an I've made it moment. I, I don't feel like in the beginning, I definitely felt like, oh, my God, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to do that. I won't have success until I've done this, this and that. I don't have that anymore. Um, but, you know, I've really always I think a lot of starting this business has allowed me to learn to kind of be happy right where I am today. Um, you know, hence the, the possibility of today. Um, because a lot of times, like when you're building a business or like, you know, I had left my job, I'd given up my income. Like if I had kind of obsessed about, oh my God, is this going to work out? Or I want this and I want that and freaked out when things weren't happening. And there was some of that, there were some fears that I had to, to work through, but the way that I was able to work through them was just kind of settling into, okay, you know what? It's Monday. And I have this interview with John, <laughs> and I'm going to do the best that I can, and I'm going to, you know, really try to share everything that worked for me. You know, just kind of really focus on what was, you know, on my plate for the day and trying to do it as thoughtfully and intentionally as I could. And that kind of settled me into that habit of always just really focusing on doing things as thoughtfully and as intentionally and to the best of my ability. And I think when that is kind of what's at the top, you know, the forefront of my mind. I, it's never like, uh, Oh, I've made it moment because I know that there's always more possibilities. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, being very content and not letting that wanting or that desire overshadow, you know, the opportunity to live this moment great right now, but also being very well aware, um, of kind of the direction I want to lean in, um, and taking steps forward to go there. Well, on behalf of Entrepreneur on Fire, thank you for having such a mentality to this interview today. It's really bringing a lot of positive vibes, and we, we definitely appreciate it. Well, thank you so much for having me, John. I appreciate it. So we're going to move on to your current business right now. You're rolling along. You're living in the moment, the possibility of today. What is one thing that's really exciting you about your business today? Honestly, the community. I mean, in, it's just a thing that's beyond anything I ever thought, you know, <laughs> was possible. Um, and, you know, once I was able to kind of create this community and start engaging with the community and really being, you know, um, really trying to be considerate of the information I was putting out there and helpful and, you know, using the community even for myself to feel motivated and inspired and engaged. It's just given so much back to me. I think more than I give to it, but that's been the biggest payoff. 
So the word entrepreneur to a lot of people brings with it an aura of mystery. We really want to know what an entrepreneur does throughout the course of a day. Can you just take us through, not a typical day, but just a couple tasks that you perform on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, I obviously spend a lot of a lot of time. I would say sixty-five to seventy percent of my time engaging with the community, uh, whether that's you know on my Facebook page, through the comments, through posting content there, um, or to replying to emails or replying to comments on my blog. That's where I spend the uh, the most significant amount of my time. Um, and then with the remainder of my time, you know, I'm creating content. You know, that's what I'm I'm in the business of doing is uh, creating content. So I'm actually in the midst of writing a book right now, which I feel like I've been writing forever. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I, uh, you know, so I'm definitely spending a lot of time, um, probably more so than I normally do when I'm not writing a book or creating content. Um, but I'm in that writing zone right now. So Sybil, what is your vision for the future of the possibility of today? You know, I think it's, I'm flexible. I'm open to that. There's definitely things I want for it. I, I want it to always be a community that's supportive and, um, you know, really helping people, you know, see possibilities that perhaps they weren't looking for and be open to kind of um, looking at things differently. And then, you know, also giving them the tools and the support they need to actually kind of gear up and, and take those steps towards, towards the possibilities that they want. Cause it's easy to kind of get caught up in your routine and, be scared to change. Um, but I definitely want that. I always want it to be, um, something that's very useful and valuable for people. Um, and then I think, you know, I'm, you know, I'm really trying to create good products. Um, and so I'm on my second book, um, and I'm in the midst of creating a course. So, you know, just, I think things that are going to help people really take advantage of the possibility of the day is, is what I hope to continue to always do and create. Awesome. Great vision. So now we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning rounds. This is where I provide you with a series of questions and you provide us with a series of amazing and mind blowing <laughs> answers. Okay. Be ready. Does that sound like a plan, Sybil? <laughs> Seatbelts on. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> what was the number one thing that was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Fear. Definitely. 100% fear. You know, fear of the unknown, um, fear of knowing if I could actually create something um, and that it would take off, fear of giving up my secure corporate income. Um, every way, every direction you looked, it was fear. What is the best business advice you ever received? I think the best business advice I ever received is to focus on the value that you are offering other people, even more so than you're focusing on your, you know, initially your P&L and all that stuff. Like that stuff will all come, right? Like you're obviously an entrepreneur. You're smart enough. You've come up with a good enough idea to create a business, but don't get caught up in doing things that are good business that are not necessarily good for your community, good for the people that you, you know, are trying to attract. And so number one rule is always value your community over anything and everything else. What is something that's working for you and your business right now? I know I keep harping on it, but I think it's because I saw what I focus on is the community. You know, it's, really doing everything. I mean, it's supporting the brand. It's create, you know, it has created, it helps evolve the brand and it's, it's just working. If, you know, they, sh you know, the sh people sharing the, the community, sharing the content helps the community grow even more. Um, um, the community supporting each other, people, you know, responding and supporting each other. Um, you know, and everyone kind of just signing up to be a possibilitarian, like that's what's working. That's great. And no, I mean, in these interviews with entrepreneurs, we always do seem to latch on a theme of some sort. And the theme of, of this interview, which <laughs> has been great, has been community and it is so yeah. important. And here at Entrepreneur on Fire, I'm also building a community because I believe so strongly on it. We have a very elite mastermind community, which is called Ignite. So I'm also a big believer in what you're building over there. And I'm as well building it 
at Entrepreneur on Fire. So I, I believe in what you're doing and I definitely commend you for that. Well, cool. Thank you for that. What's the best business book that you've read in the last six months? Oh, yeah. What is the best? Oh, you know what book I love? It's um, by the uh, CEO of Zappos. Um, and it's like the success story of Zappos. And he actually goes a lot into, you know, the, the um, strategy, if you will, of putting your passion um, for your, you know, what you're doing and the, the customer service that you're providing over everything in terms of profits and all of the stuff. And he's very passionate about his, um, employee workforce and passionate about their core values and really making certain that, you know, he's investing in them and then kind of letting things grow from there. I think it's just like the Zappo story. It's a great book. Yeah. I believe it's called delivering happiness. That's it. Yeah. Delivering happiness. And his name is Tony and I might be butchering the pronunciation, but it's H S I E H. So that's it. Yeah. I didn't even try for it. So I'm glad that I, I'm glad that you put yourself out there to go for that one. <laughs> but that, that is the book and it's, it's a, it's a really good book. Awesome. So this last question, Sybil, is by far my favorite, and it's kind of a tricky one. So take your time, you can digest it, and then just launch in with a very passionate answer. If you woke up tomorrow morning and you still had all of your experience and knowledge you currently have right now, but your business had completely disappeared, forcing you to start somewhere completely from scratch with a clean (laughs) slate, as many of our entrepreneurs find themselves right now, what would you do in the next seven days? Oh my goodness. I love that question. Um, In the next seven days. Okay. So I have all my learnings. I would honestly, I would start with the community again. Um, Well, the first thing obviously I'd start with is clearly solidifying and making certain that this was the brand, the name and all of that stuff. But then I would go to, you know, really kind of saying, Hey, this is the mission. This is the vision of the community. You know, this is what we stand for. This is what we're all about, really defining all of that stuff. And I would start sharing, um, sharing stuff and starting to try to create that community again for seven days. That would literally be like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I would just be focused on sharing content, like good content I found. I guess I don't have any now, so now I have to go create new content, maybe find good quotes, <laughs> maybe find good articles to share that I know that these people would be interested in. And I would speak to the, you know, my community like I had a community. I guess I've lost my community in the hypothetical. But um, you know, in the beginning, a lot of times you're speaking to people that aren't there. But every time I, you know, would create an article. I was like, you know what? I don't care if two people are going to see this. I want this to be valuable. I want this to be really good. And that's what I would start doing again. Wonderful. Well, listen, I love how we started with community. We're ending with community. It's the full circle. It's a great (laughs) theme. Let's just finish on that note. Sybil, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, John. Give Fire Nation one last piece of advice and then give yourself a plug. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd say my, um, my biggest piece of advice, um, and I don't, you know, I think that it will define your business. And that's really just taking advantage of the 24 hours you have every day. Um, you know, not worrying about the future, not belaboring things that have happened in the past. Just really trying to focus on, you know, really experiencing and doing everything you can every moment as you move through the day. And if you do that, you know, everything kind of falls into place, even above and beyond your business. Um, And my plug is just come by Facebook if you're interested, if it sounds cool, if you think something may resonate with you. Love to see you um, at the Possibility of Today Facebook page or at possibilityoftoday.com. Great, Sybil. Thank you again, and we'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Thanks, John. Fire Nation, thank you so much for joining us today. My one call to action for you is to go to eofire.com, join our email list, and receive our ever-growing supply of gifts to include WordPress video tutorials, an entrepreneur quiz with complete diagnosis, and access to our weekly newsletter. Also, for that entrepreneur ready to take it to the next level, Visit ignitemastermind.com, 
join our elite mastermind community and watch your business or business idea explode. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.